What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. And moving on to the next question, we have to find the constant m so that the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x exists. And notice that f of x is defined by this piecewise function here. And it has these three pieces, three separate functions for x values greater than 4, when x is equal to 4, and then when x is less than 4. And notice from these three functions here, the function that contains this constant m that we're going to be solving for is this third function, this root 2x minus m. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to work with these two functions first, the ones that don't have this constant m, because what we can do with those two, the first two, is figure out some y values and see what's going on around that x value of 4, and then we can deal with this third function and see how it fits in the scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a graph here so we can show visually what's going on. And notice that the x value that we're dealing with throughout the whole question is 4, right? 4, 4, 4, and then we're finding the limit, or uh, we're finding the constant m so that the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x exists. And I actually want to start off with this middle function here. So notice that f of x is defined by this function x squared minus x when x is equal to 4. So this here, because it's when x is equal to 4, this here is just a single point. And so if we plug in that x value of 4 into this function, we'll have 4 squared minus 4, which would give us 12. And so 12, let's say that's like up here. So we know that f of x is defined at this x value of 4 here at this point at a y value of 12. Now sometimes you'll get functions where it'll just have 12 here, it'll just have that y value a lot of times. So then you know right away that the y value is 12. And sometimes they'll have a whole function here even though it's only for one point. So just be aware of that. This could have also been written the same way, but instead of x squared minus x, there could have just been a 12 there. And that would just represent that y value, that single point. Okay, so we know that that point exists for f of x. Now, what about this function here? We got x squared plus x minus 6 root x. Well, that function is um, defined when x is greater than 4. But let's actually see what's happening at that x value 4. And if we take 4 and plug it into this function here, we'll have 4 squared plus 4, which is 20 minus 6 times the square root of 4, which is two, uh, minus 6 times 2. So we'll have 20 minus 12, which gives us 8. So we know that this function here, at an x value of 4, it's starting at a y value of 8, but there's a hole there because it's not defined at that x value of 4. It's for x values greater than 4. So there's going to be a hole here. Now, notice that x squared plus x minus 6 root x, it's kind of a complex function. So what we can do is we can make a table of values, a fairly large table of values from 4 and on, to see what the shape of the function is going to be. To be honest, I don't even know what this shape looks like. We could figure that out. We could take the work to figure that out. But notice that for this question, we don't really need to know the shape. All we need to know is where this hole is at, because we know that for an x va for uh, x values greater than four, this function is going to be continuous to a positive infinity. Because notice that you're always going to be able to square root a positive number here. So any x values greater than four, from five, for example, to positive infinity, all those numbers are going to work for this function. It's never going to be undefined. In fact, this function would be undefined for x values less than 0 because you wouldn't be able to square root a negative number here. 
But for any x values that are greater than or equal to zero, that's the domain for this function. So it's always going to be defined. So it's always going to be continuous for x values greater than four. So we don't need to know the shape of it too much, but we know that after it's just going to be continuous. Let's just put a random function like that. We could have put a line, we could have put a parabola. Let's just pretend that this function looks like this over here. Okay, again, the shape doesn't matter. We just know that it's continuous for x values greater than four. Now, from this diagram here, how can this limit as x approaches four of f of x exists? Well, what that means is that the limit as x approaches four from the negative side of f of x has to equal the limit as x approaches four from the positive side of f of x. Both of those have to equal, and then this limit here is going to exist. Well, from this diagram here, we know the limit as x approaches four from the positive side of f of x, right? So if we're approaching this x value of four from the positive side, what y value are we approaching? We're approaching eight. So even though that the function is defined at a y value of 12 at this uh, x value of four, the y value that we're approaching is eight. And we've gone over examples like that where you can have a function where maybe there's a hole at a certain x value and then it's defined at another y value but the limit is going to end up being the y value at which this hole is at. And so it's the same kind of scenario here. So if we know the limit as x approaches 4 um, from the positive side of f of x is equal to 8, then we know that the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of f of x, it has to equal 8 as well. And so this function here, however that looks, so this is a square root function. I'm not sure how this is going to look. We don't know what the constant m is, but let's say it's just looking like this. Again, the shape doesn't really matter. But we know that as we approach this x value of 4 from the negative side, it's got to approach a y value of 8 in order for this limit to exist. Remember, we're finding a constant m so that the limit exists. And so with that whole intuition, basically, uh, I'm going to erase this here. What that means is that at an x value of 4, this function here has to take a y value of 8. So if we plug in 4 for x, this whole y value has to equal 8, right? Because if it does, even though there's a hole there, it's not defined for an x value of 4, we know that the location of that hole is going to be the same location of the hole for this function. And so it's going to approach that same y value of 8. And so we got to find out what constant m makes this function here take a value of 8 at an x value of 4. And so if we solve for m here, we'll have 8 minus m under the square root. This is going to equal 8. To get rid of this square root, we could square both sides. So we'll have 8 minus m. We got rid of the square root. Anything squared or anything square rooted squared, those just cancel out and you're just left with what's under the square root. And then 8 squared is 64. And when we bring the negative m over, bring the 64 over, we'll have 8 minus 64, which is negative 56, equals positive m. And that there is your answer. So negative 56 is the um, value for m that would make this limit exist. Another thing I want to mention is notice that this function is discontinuous at an x value of 4. So if they ask that, um, if they ask about continuity, the function is discontinuous at an x value of 4. Notice there's a hole there. 
and it's uh, defined here at this y value 12, but the limit exists because it's approaching that y value of eight from both sides, it's approaching it. And remember, that's what the question is asking us, to find the constant m so that the limit as x approaches four of f of x ex uh, exists. Anyway, hopefully uh, you got that explanation. I know it was a little, uh, a little longer than maybe I could have made it, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, break down a question like this, where you could have a discontinuous function, the limit could still exist, and sometimes you gotta find the constant so the limit does exist. So basically, this whole middle point, this middle function, this middle piece, was pretty much irrelevant in the question. Really all we needed to know was what's the y value at an x value for this function and then find m so the y value is the same at that x value for for that function.